I'm afraid I flunked AVE's school on drilling. Out of five attempts, only two holes. Well, this hole got close. This hole, too close to this edge, I couldn't use it. Had to make another hole. This is the last hole I drilled. Finally got smart and used a smaller drill bit as a pilot hole. And this heat sink I ruined too. I drilled two holes. They're both both walked. This one's almost straight, but it's walked that way. This one walked that way. I gotta buy some good counter punches, I guess. Or center punches. I need the one that automatically strikes when you push on it. And maybe a real tiny one as well. Back to the chip amps. Well, I did resolder this. These are now going to the fuse holders instead of the raw power supply. So I've got the uh, power leads broken because I don't have fuses in there right now. Got to dig those up. Actually, fuse caps are some of the things I'm missing for this amp. Anyways, I looked at with an ohm meter at the plus and the minus versus ground. And I didn't really see a short or anything. In fact, it climbed up into the kilo ohm, so I don't know how I'm drawing such a heavy draw. Now, let's see the short between plus, you know what I didn't do is plus and minus. Anyways, I'm about to side of the chip in in the new one. Let me just go to, uh... Yeah, there's no short across the plus and minus either. So I don't know why that's drawing so dang much. I think I'm going to have to, I don't know, make sure it's not oscillating it with the scope or something, but I can't see it drawing that much current, pulling the power supply down that fast, that hard, just from a little oscillation. I'm going to side of the chip on, on this one. This is the second board. This is the board that isn't working. I'm going to try the other, it's mate. So, soldering these in, it's kind of important to take a good look, make sure the chip is parallel, it's not sitting cocked at one side or the other. And make sure it's straight, not cocked. And also that it's not cocked forward or back too much either. Not close to 90s I can get it. And when I'm happy with the way I got the chip aligned, then I'll solder one corner, then the other corner. And then once I've got that and take a second look, make sure it's all in line, I'll start, start going bam, 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 hitting all the ones right down the rows. Heavy inertia building. Abandon this sucker. I'm getting nowhere fast with this project. The other channel does work. But that's only 30 volts total, where it should be 100 volts. I go much higher than that, it just starts sucking current like crazy. And that's with the good chip. The other chip just sucks current. Even though I don't get a short when I measure from the uh, the rails you know, to ground, I don't get a short. It sure pulls like a short, though. It pulls a lot of current. So it seems like right about 27 volts, where I should have 100, it really just starts sucking current like crazy. I'm going to, uh, just for yucks, put a current meter in series, see uh, how fast that goes up. So there seems to be a trigger point right about 27 volts, where it just pivots and climbs. So i got to blame the chips, basically. You know, and there's probably a reason they put 32 volts on their, uh, in their ad. They probably got a bunch of counterfeit chips or maybe they're uh, dropout chips that someone stole off of the from the garbage but these chips are not doing their job there's nothing wrong with these PC boards there I've double checked them all there's no bridges there's no wrong resistors there's no nothing like that capacitors are good none of them are heating none of them are backwards no thumbs down on this project. Another disappointing purchase from 
Banggood. I've had quite a few actually from Banggood. The uh, I mentioned in my last unboxing the uh, CO detector and that since has turned up on uh, Consumers Reports as a defective unit although mine had no brand name at all and they specified two or three different brand names but the box and the unit look identical to what I have and they actually we call them for detecting CO2 too quickly and alerting too quickly there's supposed to be a little delay to prevent nuisance delay uh, alarms and mine doesn't do anything you know I can put a glowing embers underneath it you know woofing out CO and I still read reads zero 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 no matter what I do so although it's a kind of a pretty unit it's, it's useless time I'll never get back hours wasted and then for me to take this apart again buy new chips for probably what I paid for the original kits um, I don't know it's just not worth anything at this point it's gonna take hours to unsolder from a double layer PC board those chips are gonna be a pain in the butt to unsolder and uh, then I'll have to pay top dollar for some prime chips because these obviously aren't disappointed so if someone wanted to buy these kits they're cheap enough to buy just for the PC board frankly and the resistors and the capacitors I suppose are good enough I'd probably put bigger caps in for these they shrunk these down from what they originally were <sighs> depending on the power supply that's driving it that's an issue or not but uh, it's just sucking current like I'll get out so I've got a voltmeter here I've got an ammeter here 200 milliamp range when I crank things and this uh, I got no input so it's quiet this is quiet quiescence as I crank things up about 25 we're cool when we start to hit that 40 milliamp I go past that light goes way up I'm pulling a lot of current but I'm still only pulling 41 milliamps here so I'm thinking it must be the other rail that's doing it I'm gonna repeat this again on the negative rail this is the positive rail that I have the ammeter in the ammeter cut into the negative side I've also put the meter back on the 10 amp range and as I crank up voltage you can see the same effect get to the 26 mark now why is my bulb not going again now huh I'm going a little higher in voltage I'm going up to 28 now maybe the resistance of the 29 now I guess the resistance of the meter changed the balance of things at any rate I'm getting a half an amp of current for well, 0.67 amps of current when I've only got 30 volts across rail to rail so I've only got 15 volt rails and I'm already drawing 600 and almost 700 milliamps so something's really screwy with that chip even though it sounds good it just draws way too much current when you start stacking the voltage up I'm sure if I put the full Monty voltage across this it would just blow it up which I'd do for you just for laughs but uh, I really don't want to stress my uh, Tiger chassis too much here it's brand new I'm running out of fuses I don't want to blow fuses I don't want to blow diodes I'm not going to do it so I think this project's going to go on hold for a while I got other products to do this was not a quick and dirty project like I hoped even though one channel works sort of very disappointing it's not my workmanship it's they're frickin chips back to the chip amp amps chip amp amps